Hi, Kevin here, and in this video I want to tackle a problem where we have a whole number, a positive whole number, and we want to, instead of taking its value, we want to dissect it in, in a way and add up each of its individual digits and find what the sum of each individual digit is. And so I'm going to write this function called um, add digits, but in particular, we're going to address this problem using a, an approach called recursion. Um, and so we're going to recursively add all of the digits in our whole number. And so this is the number that we're going to calculate. Um, and like I said, we want to only deal with um, positive whole numbers. And so unsigned, if you recall, says that it's not going to have a sign to it. So it can't have like a negative um, associated with that number. And then an integer is a whole number. Um, and then similarly, once it does that calculation, we want to return also a positive whole number. And so when we're thinking about uh, addressing this recursively, what we want to do is break down this problem into, okay, how can we simplify the problem and solve a piece of it? And then in another case, take the bigger problem and break it into those smaller pieces. Um, and so if I think about this problem, kind of the simplest version of the problem I can think is if the number that we're trying to add up only has a single digit, right? There's no actually addition involved. Um, when you have a number that's a single digit, the sum of the digits is, well, that digit. So like if you have nine, um, the value of that is nine. Um, and so let's go ahead and write that part. So if number is less than 10, so in other words, if it's a single digit, then we want to return um, just whatever the value of number, whatever it is. However, now in our other situation, when we have more than one digit, we need to make sure that we first extract the value of uh, the rightmost digit. So if we're dealing with the value like 123, um, that three is the rightmost digit. And so we wanna extract that and get its value and then we want to say, well, okay, let's repeat this process, but with that same number while ignoring that rightmost digit. So, you know, first we have 123. Three is that rightmost digit. Once we calculate, well, three's value is three, then let's look at the other two numbers, one and two, um, and repeat that process. So what we're going to say is, okay, if we don't have just a single, uh, uh, single digit in our number, we want to return the value of, first let's extract that rightmost digit, and we can do that by saying number mod 10. So mod gets the, does division and gets the remainder, and if we're dividing by 10, it's always gonna give us whatever that rightmost digit is. Um, and so in 123 divided by, or mod 10 would get us the value three. But we don't just want that three, we want to then go through this process again with the one and the two. And we can do that by recursively calling this function. That is, the function is calling itself. But the important piece of this is we're not calling it with the same value again, we're giving it a value that is somewhat smaller of a problem. So we used to be dealing with 123, now we want to deal with one, two. Um, and we can do that by saying number divided by 10. And because, because integers are always whole numbers, 123 divided by 10 will just be 12. Um, and so I believe even just in these few lines of code, this will solve our problem of adding up all of the digits in a number, but let's test it out. So in int main, I'm going to call it a few times and see out whatever this function is returning. So I'm going to do a see out statement and let's start up with that um, test case where we give the value 123. I'm going to print out an end line so we can uh, separate each time we run this. We'll print out on a new line. Let me call this again. This time, let's think of that simple example, like if we just have a single digit. And then let's also do another one that 
let's test out. We haven't had a, a number yet that has zeros in it, um, which you know you might imagine that that might trip up your algorithm. Let's test that out. So let's test it out with a value like 500. And if this works as I expect, um, this first one should say take three plus two plus one is six. Um, so the first thing it should print out is six. Then if we run it again and we get the value nine, um, well, the value is nine, right? And then if we run it a third time and five plus zero plus zero is five. Um, so let's run it. And over here on the right, we can see it building. And now we got six, nine, and five. So that seems to be working at least for these three test cases. But let's kind of recap how this recursion is working uh, because it can get a little bit uh, complicated. Let's see step by step. Let's walk through how it's working for this first time that we're calling it with 123. So our parameter number has that value 123. And what we're gonna do is say, okay, is 123 less than 10? No, it's not. So this, this if statement is false, so we're gonna go to the else instead. Well, 123 mod 10 is, is the value three. So this is saying three plus, but we have what's this recursive call of the function. Um, and we're doing a recursive call of the function, but it's taking number divided by 10. So 123 divided by 10 is 12. Um, so this time we can't even finish this addition yet. First, we need to call the function again. So we're saying, okay, three plus whatever this second call of the function is. So let's walk through the second call. This time number has the value two, or no, sorry, has the number 12. Um, and 12 less than 10 is false again. So we're gonna to go to else. And this time 12 mod 10 has the value two. So this is saying return the value two plus, oh, but we're gonna to have to call this function again. So two plus the result of when we're calling add digits with 12 divided by 10, um, which is just one. You know, 12 by, divided by 10 is 1.2, but we're dealing with integers only, so it has a value one. So we're gonna call this function yet again recursively. And so now we're calling add digits with number having the value one. Well, if we look at this, one is less than 10. That is true this time. So instead of going down here to doing this addition, we're simply gonna return the value number. And so number at this point is one. And so it's gonna return that value one to that previous time um, this function ran, where if you recall, we had the expression two plus whatever the result was. Well, the result was one. So this time it's gonna evaluate, okay, two plus one um, is three. And so that's gonna finally, we can finally finish evaluating the, the value of this return. So we're now we're re returning the value three to the initial time that we called this function um, when the parameter was 123 and we had this expression, 123 mod 10 is three plus the three that got returned by the recursive call of it. So we're doing three plus three is six. And finally, um, we are returning the value six, and then that's how it got passed back to int main, that value six, and printed it out, and then it moved on to the, you know, the next time we're gonna actually run the function. So let's recap, or let me highlight a couple main points in that. Um, and that is this first, um, case is called the base case. That is, it's you always need to have this situation when you're dealing with recursion where you say, okay, we're not going to call the function again. We're just going to return a value. Um, and so that we call that the base case. That's where we're saying, okay, stop right there. I'll just give you a value instead of saying to call the function again. And then this else statement with the return calls its own function. And so that we call that the recursive case. And so the key responsibility of those two different cases is the base case says 
says, let's tackle this very small piece of the larger problem and stop the recursion. The recursive case, on the other hand, says, okay, let's bite off a piece of it. You know, in this case, we've said, okay, we are getting the value of one of those digits. But more, uh, more importantly, when we're making the recursive call, we're reducing the problem, right? Instead of having three digits that we began with, we're going to call it again with only two digits. And then finally, when we recurse again, we're going to call it again with one digit. So the role of that recursive case is to reduce the problem until it's something that we can handle with something like the base case. All right, that's it for recursion.